now let us discuss about operating system structures we have five types of operating system structures such as first one is simple structure second one is monolithic structure third one is layered approach fourth one is micro kernel structure and the last one is modular structure now let us discuss all these five structures one by one so first one is simple structure the best example for the simple structure is ms das so here uh, there is no proper structure there is no well defined structure it doesn't follow any well defined structure and there are no modules here everything will be placed in a single module here the major advantage of ms das operating system is in less space we can implement the functionality but we know that the major disadvantage of ms das is it is a single programming system so that means at a time cpu can execute only one program after executing that program only cpu can starts executing some other program now let us see the diagram for the ms das here the bottom one is rom bias device drivers so here the bottom layer is rom device drivers on top of this we have ms das device drivers on top of this we have resident system program that is nothing but system program the the most commonly used system program is operating system on top of this we have application program here application program can access this rom device drivers is nothing but hardware we know that any computer mainly contains four components the bottom layer is hardware on top of it we have some operating system on top of it we have some application programs so here this rom bias device drivers is nothing but hardware components here the major problem is an application program can access the hardware devices directly so there is a possibility that application program may change the content of the hardware so if application program fails we know what is application program the application program is nothing but a program which is developed by the user so we can say that if an application program crashes fails then the entire system will fail why because here the application program is has direct access with hardware devices so this is the problem here if our program crashes then there is a possibility that the entire system may fail so this is the problem with simple structure now let us see about the second one that is monolithic structure the best example for the monolithic structure is unix uh, in this structure we have a kernel which performs all functionalities like uh, process management memory management file management io management protection and security so here we have kernel kernel will do all the functionalities here the monolithic here if you observe here at the bottom we have hardware devices all these are nothing but hardware devices terminal controllers uh, next device controllers disks and tapes memory controllers physical memory memory controllers all this is nothing but hardware on top of the hardware we have kernel so kernel contains various functionalities like uh, cpu scheduling page replacement demand paging virtual memory file system swapping block io system next to signals terminal handling character io system terminal drivers on top of this we have system programs so we have system programs like shells commands compilers and interpreters on top of it we have users so here uh, 
uh, we can divide uh, the monolithic structure into mainly two parts we have some more parts also but mainly two parts the first one is kernel the second one is system program uh, kernel again subdivided into two parts the first one is device drivers all these are nothing but device drivers the second one is functionalities all these are nothing but uh, functionalities system programs we have system programs called shells compilers interpreters and assemblers here the major problem is if we want to add an extra functionality to the kernel then what will happen is already kernel has too many components so if we want to add a new component then it will becomes the kernel will becomes quite large and complex why because already the kernel has too many components if you want to add one more component then the kernel will becomes quite large and complex so it is very very difficult to implement so this is the problem here so here where the kernel resides kernel resides on top of the hardware and on bottom of the system program on top of the hardware and on bottom of the system program what is the problem with monolithic structure uh, if you want to add an extra functionality to the kernel then it is extremely difficult why because already kernel has too many components so this is about monolithic structure the best example is unix operating system now let us see the third one the third one is layered structure so in this structure uh, uh, we have several modules so where each module is called as a layer here we have several layers the bottom layer is layer 0 layer 0 represents hardware on top of layer 0 we have layer 1 on top of layer 1 we have layer 2 likewise and the highest layer that is the topmost layer is layer n layer n represents user so here the point is the bottom most layer is layer 0 layer 0 represents hardware whereas the topmost layer is layer n layer n represents users here each layer uses the services provided by its lower layers and provide those services to its upper layers if you take layer 1 layer 1 uses the services provided by layer 0 and layer 1 provides all those services to layer 2 so that is the point here uh, so here the major advantage is layer n that is the topmost layer cannot access layer 0 that is hardware directly why because here layer n can access only layer n minus 1 layer n minus 1 can access only layer n minus 2 but layer n has no direct access with hardware so that is the advantage here the main advantage of this approach is it is very very simple to construct as well as debugging is also very very easy what is debugging debugging means it is the process of checking whether the program is producing correct output or not suppose if there is a problem at layer 2 suppose if there is a problem at layer 2 then we can say that there is no problem yet its lower layers such as layer 1 and layer 0 and there are no problems yet its upper layers such as layer 3 layer 4 likewise so if layer 2 has a debugging problem then we can say that only layer 2 has the problem its lower layers and its upper layers have no problem and the major advantage one more advantage of the layered approach is it implements abstraction we know what is abstraction abstraction means showing representing essential features and hiding the background details unwanted details here each layer uses the services provided by its lower layers but it doesn't know how all those services are implemented so layer 1 can uses the services of layer 0 but layer 1 doesn't know how layer 0 is internally implemented uh, and the major disadvantage of this approach is it is very very difficult to design all these layers why because here we have too many layers 
so designing of those layers are difficult so that is the disadvantage here and the fourth one is micro kernel structure the best example is mac it is not apple mac it is mach operating system in the olden days we used mach operating system whereas apple mac spelling is mac here micro kernel means uh, the important functionalities will be placed in the kernel and the unnecessary details will be pushed on to the user mode here we have user mode user mode means user programs here we have kernel mode so kernel mode mode means micro kernel uh, here micro kernel contains only the necessary components important components such as ipc memory management cpu scheduling whereas unnecessary components of micro kernel are moved to the user user programs so the code will become small in the micro kernel why because here what we are doing we are removing unnecessary functionalities of the kernel and we are placing them in user programs so the the size of the kernel will becomes quite easy so that's why it is called as micro so micro means small it contains only necessary components so the remaining components are available in user programs like we have application program file system and device drivers so all these are nothing but uh, unnecessary components of the uh, this kernel okay this is nothing but micro kernel so here one user program can interact with another user program with the help of ipc we know about ipc inter process communication one process can communicates with another process with the help of the ipc so here application program can interact with file system with the help of ipc we know that we can implement ipc with the help of message passing so application program is sending messages to the file system likewise file system can interact with device device drivers with the with the help of some messages okay and the problem with uh, this approach is uh, here uh, here the user programs need to access the kernel why because application program is interacting with file system with the help of ipc only so the burden on the kernel will increases so this is the problem here so in order to overcome all these problems we use the latest structure that is modular structure so fifth one is modular structure so in modular structure what will happen is operating system kernel 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 contains core components kernel contains core components that is necessary important components and the remaining components that is remaining functionalities remaining modules are added dynamically at run time or boot time so here the kernel contains only important components remaining modules will be loaded dynamically at run time or uh, execute at run time or boot time so this is most efficient approach uh, uh, the best example for the modular structure is solaris solaris is the best example for the modular structure so this is about operating system structures